Uh, Mr. Williams, uh, the floor is yours. Uh, welcome to the committee. Thank you, Mr. Chairman uh, and ranking member and my friend uh, my, from my colleague from Texas. I'll be brief today and there's a lot going on, but uh, Chairman Ranking Visklowski and Ranking Member Calvert, uh, I thank you for the opportunity to testify before this sub subcommittee and for all that you do for our men and women in uniform. Today I'd like to take this opportunity to talk about Fort Hood, uh, about the uh, military's readiness and what's needed to continue in America's superiority in the future. Fort Hood, uh, we know, is the great place that is commonly known is home to over 36,000 soldiers and airmen with thousands of troops currently deployed in South Korea, Europe, Afghanistan, and the Middle East in support of global combat, peacekeeping, and humanitarian operations. Our soldiers bring to Central Texas over 48,000 family members, making Fort Hood one of the largest and most populous military installations in the world. Its economic contributions are also significant, delivering roughly $25 billion to the Texas economy last year. And I'd also uh, would like to call attention to North Fort Hood, home to the 1st Army Division West and a staple in my district. Division West serves as a critical function in the pre, post, and demobilization operations, a mission that has likely affected your state's uh, U.S. Army Reserve or National Guard units in some way. I encourage this committee to make every possible dollar available to support this critical mission. As the DOD and ForceCom continue to rely on the U.S. Army Reserve and National Guard units to supplement manpower shortages, we must uh, ensure that we are providing the uh, training, funding, and resources available to maintain their effectiveness and uh, lethality on the battlefield. The modernization of our force is pivotal in our ability to develop the force of the future, and I remain supportive of uh, every effort to build the most lethal and modern fighting force on the planet. With that said, if there were an opportunity to identify specific defense accounts that don't require an increase this year but are projected to have one, I hope that instead of returning the entirely to the defense account, uh, the full committee would consider providing a reasonable percentage towards MILCON projects that have been pending or underfunded far too long. Fort Hood's top priorities continue to be improvements to barracks, motor pools, and aircraft hangars. Each one of these infrastructure types are critical for the health and welfare of the soldiers, as well as their professional ability to carry out their assigned duties. And I hope that when 302B levels are determined that there will be significant plus-ups in the MILCON account for these projects in the same way that I hope that there will be practical increases in the subcommittee's jurisdiction. Lastly, I trust this committee will continue to prioritize the overall modernization and readiness of the total force, and most importantly, to not sacrifice one for the other. Last year, the Army Futures Command stood up in Austin, Texas. Uh, in their own words, Army Futures Command, or AFC, uh, is on a quest to modernize the way the Army does business by creating a space of endless possibilities to explore, develop, and test new methods, organizations, and technologies. Above all else, we want to make sure soldiers have what they need before they need it to protect tomorrow, today. These innovations uh, within the DOD are essential to modernizing the force and utilizing the expertise and solutions that will put combat enablers on the field of battle in less time and at a better cost. I hope the utmost of consideration will be given to AFC and that our defense committees will ensure that uh, they have the talent and resources necessary to achieve their mission. In order to do that, we must guarantee that they can hire top talent through already existing streamlined hiring processes that provide competitive compensation and long-term retention strategies. They, uh, there are countless Americans who are excited for the opportunity to serve their country in this innovative field. It is our future. Our goal should be to welcome these talents, not create barriers to entry. In May of 2018, I had the privilege of traveling to Iraq and Kuwait with my colleague and ranking member of MILCON VA Subcommittee, uh, uh, Chairman John Carter, who I am honored to represent Fort Hood with him. During our travels, I enjoyed spending time with our three Corps soldiers deployed to the region as part of Operation Inherent Resolve. The experience is one that I will never uh, forget, I will always treasure and reaffirm why our tireless advocacy for the military in this body is so vitally important. America's adversaries are working every day to defeat us, and if we're tested, we must be prepared to deliver a resounding response of American strength and resolve. We cannot afford to put Band-Aids on a problem and hope that we can keep a helicopter, a plane, a ship, or a tank in use for another day 
past its prime. The investment in our modernization is key not only to maintaining a competitive edge against our near peers and terrorists, but to guarantee the safety of our service members who so selfishly volunteer to get behind the stick of that helicopter or the wheel of that ship. We have a long-standing bipartisan tradition of, committing, of coming together to provide the, the Pentagon with the resource necessary to fight and win in any domain, and I'm committed to continuing that cooperation. Mr. Chairman and Mr. Ranking Member, thank you again for providing me the opportunity to discuss the defense priorities on Fort Hood and throughout the DOD. Your steadfast uh, support for our service, men and women, does not go unnoticed. The United States of America has the greatest military in the world has ever known, and it is the honor of my lifetime to represent our service members in Congress. So thank you, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Ranking Member. Uh, I yield my time back. Mr. Williams, thank you very much uh, for your testimony. I certainly uh, hear a clear bell here on the uh, military construction accounts. We uh, share that concern and also the investment as far as the mobilization platforms I think are critical because you want to make sure everyone is as safe and as effective as they can be. So we we'll certainly appreciate that. Uh, as I think I asked last year, though, are you still uh, showing Judge Carter the way? Oh, naturally. It's, it's part of the hardest thing I do in Congress, <laughs> but uh, I'm still at it. <laughs> well, I, uh, I want to thank the gentleman. I've been to Fort Hood. It's a wonderful facility, and the men and women who serve there are uh, fabulous, and I'm sure you're very proud of them, as the rest of the country is. And uh, go Dodgers. Thank you. You're with a winner. Yeah. Thank you. God bless. Mr. Secretary, oh, I also want to thank you uh, for what you and uh, John Carter do to represent that uh, area. So thank you so much.